Hi, and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining us. We've got the pleasure of Mark Coles over at the IT. Mark, head of IT, head of technical at IT. What is it? Your, what's head your title? Mate? Yes, head of technical regulations at the IT, Darren. And good afternoon to you. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us. And and the reason we're we're together, and I felt the need to to capture you for a short period of time, is uh, is really because, well, it's the eighth of May. It's my birthday to start off with. So so yeah, I'll I'll take birthday. all the accolades and all that, like, all the applause, uh, and uh, and also you've managed to do something on my birthday that's quite important. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we were informed about a week ago, weren't we, that there was going to be this opportunity to comment on a, a regulation change. It, it spoke about an urgent need for change. Can you just quickly summarise what's happened and, and what period we're in at the moment? Yes. So back in, I'm going to say the end of summer into autumn of last year, 2023, Beamer the British Electrotechnical and Allied Manufacturers Association. And they're the, the trade body that represent switchgear manufacturers, manufacturers of, of electrical accessories, et cetera. They issued a bulletin and the bulletin was about bi-directional devices. Right. And that, that's, that, that's the, 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 the main thing here. We have bi-directional devices and unidirectional devices in terms of uh, switchgear and the likes of protective devices. And that when we've seen this, we've been selling these things for years and years. And you're right. Some manufacturers clearly identify that theirs is a unidirectional device and other manufacturers. And it's more prevalent over the last sort of couple of years. We've started to see a lot of manufacturers come up with RCBOs, MCBs, AFDDs and the like. They are now classed as bidirectional. Now, I was wrong. I used to believe that this was because of the, the current flow. But you've told me, and it's quite clear in this uh, in this new uh, document that's for public comment, it's not current flow, is it, we need to consider? No. So you think about the sine wave. The sine wave is, a, is our up and downy, isn't it? There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, a forward part and a, and a reverse part to that. So uh, the, the, the sine wave, we, we talk about it being 50, 50 hertz, 50 times a second. Yeah. But in that in that one second, it it, it flips a hundred times. Current flows in the positive, yeah. and then and negative then back in a negative. So we're not talking about current flow here. We're talking about power and where power is going. So I'll give you an example. Imagine you've charged your vehicle at home. You've charged it up. You've charged the battery, and you've driven it off. And somewhere out there in the big wide world, you've needed to charge again. So you've charged up your vehicle. You've yeah. come home. And but you've plugged your vehicle back into the house and you're now charging your internal battery in the house. Vehicle to grid. Yeah. From the yeah. vehicle, vehicle to grid. So what we're doing there is we're taking power that's stored, energy stored within the battery in the vehicle, and you're transferring it into the dwelling. So that's power flowing one way. Now think about it. We charge the car initially by sending power from the house to the vehicle. To the car, so yeah. power. We're not talking about current here. We talked about power and it's a power flow. It's power flow there in two directions. Because the actual regulation that, that's being proposed here is regulation 530.3.201. The 201 indicates it's a UK specific regulation. So that's indicating this. And it says here, selection and erection of equipment for protection, isolation, switching, control and monitoring shall take account of all possible directions of power flow. So you cleared that one up. It then says where bidirectional power flow is possible, as we've just stated, or it could be a battery system, couldn't it? Or it could be an EV system. Uh, so where any of this power flow is possible, only a device suitable for bidirectional power flow shall be used. And we know that the word shall is in there means we must do it. So now this is requiring all of the designers and installers out there to really make sure the protective devices they're looking for, if they're installing PV, battery, or any generating set really, isn't it? Including the battery that sits in the car, anything that can allow power to flow in two directions, it's clear the protective devices, the isolation, the switching, the control, the monitoring devices all need to be bi-directional. Now, how do we go identifying these bi-directional devices from unidirectional? So when you look at the particular regulation, you'll see in there that there's a note beneath it. So, uh, yes. so what the, the first thing I want, I want to say is I want to prompt everybody to go online and have a look at it. And, and if you feel necessary, put a comment in, not just yeah. a comment, but put, put a proposal in if you feel it needs to change. However, you'll see in there that the, the, the note identifies what we're looking at. Now, then, when we pick up protected devices, 
often we see we have a supply side and a load side. So when you see supply and load, you know how to connect it up. You're informed. That's the supply. That's the load. That is one directional. That's unidirectional. It's got to flow in that direction. Yeah. But if you have a protected device, and by protected device, I mean uh, circuit breaker, RCBO, RCD, if it's not identified in terms of load and supply, the assumption there is that it's bi-directional. That, that, right. that, so that that supplies can be connected either side and the load can be connected either side. So if someone's doing an EICR and they can't clearly see on the protected device that there is an in and an out clearly marked, they can mm. assume then that it's a bi-directional. One thing I will say at this point here, if you are wondering and you're not quite sure, um, we've been talking to all the manufacturers and I know that a number of, of our procurement team, they've been working really hard on this. Um, they, they've been talking to all the manufacturers and asking the question, have you got bi-directional devices? And that's, again, that's available via the counter or, or just, just come to us and ask the question. And here at CEF, if we can help, we will do. So we may go to the manufacturer for you and ask the question. And so please, just if you're worried or you're concerned, just ask and if we can help, we will do there. So this, you, you mentioned that people comment on this and you've encouraged in this and that's the the purpose of this five minutes worth is to get people to go this how do they get their hands oh first of all how do they look at it and how do they comment on it right so we talked about the dpc a draft for public consultation is the proper term and you need to go to the, st the standards review portal on the bsi website and i'm sure you guys can provide the the web link there Yes, we will do. Yeah. So have a look at the comments on this one. We'll be providing a link there. So just have a look down or have a look up and depends what social media outlet we're looking on at the time. Yeah, there's going to be a link there. So if you haven't got that, you need to take yourself to British Standards and BSI and British Standard Development, isn't it? That's the, the standard point re standards for. review. Yes, yeah, standards development, yeah. standards review. So, so, so go there. You'll need to register for the first time. Very simple, you know, email address and password, that sort of thing, which we're used to. Yeah. And yeah. then after that, you'll type in search for BS 7671. It'll bring up the most recent, i.e. this one that's out today. And then you'll click on it and you'll see that it's one regulation and two definitions. That's all it is, the, the, the proposal for this amendment. It's very small. But again, it's to it, it's to pick up this, this potential safety issue that, that protective devices can be compromised if you use the wrong one in the wrong circumstance. Yeah, so that's what we're trying to reduce here, isn't it? To ensure that all users of these of these types of systems are safe because that power flow in those both directions. Brilliant. So what we'll do is we'll hope that all of everyone listening to this, we do really encourage you, the same as Mark was saying there, to, to log on. Uh, literally a couple of details and allow you to view this and allow you then to comment. Once that process is finished, Mark, how long do we think that's going to be? Uh, so it, it's a 28 day DPC, draft for public consultation period, conventionally with BS7671 and other British standards, actually, we see 12 weeks. Yeah. This one, because uh, there's a need to get this out in industry as soon as possible. And that's another thing that we that the, the committee w wasn't going to go down the route of a corrigendum because a corrigendum corrects errors that have come around during the drafting process. Or so this wasn't an error. No, this is just, it's no. come about through industry. It's been, we've been alerted by the manufacturers, uh, particularly to, to, yeah. to the trade body. And then from there, we have to go out to public comment, give give the, the public the right to comment on what's going on. So it's a reduced period of four weeks. So that's out then. Then there's a period where the internal committees need to review that. And the publication, we're looking, the, the I'm saying we, the committee, JPL 64, is looking to publish in summer, summer of 2024. Okay, so this will and and is there a uh, so normally when we see regs come in, there's a period of six months when we that get that period where we can work to one or the other. I understand that isn't there's this one. Once this comes out, that's it. The intention is that this will go straight out there, use it immediately. But also bear in mind when the Brown Book came along. So this was BS seven six seven one two thousand eighteen Amendment two twenty twenty two. The Brown Book when that came along, there was a statement in there in the introduction saying. Everything else is withdrawn prior. Just use this. Yeah. In this instance, you'll have the brown book and that what you've got in your hand there. Yep. The two together, the brown book and this new amendment, amendment two and amendment three, will form the up-to-date standard to work to. Right. Okay. Okay. So there you go. So look, I encourage everyone listening to this, get on there, have a look at this, make your comments if you don't agree with any of the words or any of the in the possible outcomes of this new regulation and the definitions there because it is going to affect you because as mark just said once this comes out that's it you've got to work to it it clearly says there you shall be using these so if you're working with a manufacturing partner 
ask them the question, have they got these devices? Come to us, ask us, have they got these devices? And we can find that information out for you. So there you go. You've all been warned. You've all been informed and you've all been updated. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Mark, for giving us that insight into what's going on. And um, we'll hope to see you soon. Take care, everyone.